This is Field Sports Channel News. The Welsh Government has ignored a huge public consultation on plans to licence the release of game birds and now plans to licence it by the back door. That's the accusation from countryside organisations after government countryside agency Natural Resources Wales announced plans to introduce game bird licensing by 2025. A survey on birds licensing received more than 42,000 responses. Basque says the Welsh Government took only a small sample of views from its survey in order to twist the result. Basque is now considering taking legal action against the game bird licensing plan. If this was all to go ahead, and it's not a done deal yet, uh, we'd have a general licence in place for game bird releasing in Wales. You'd have to abide by those terms and conditions. And here's the catch. It will be the anti-shooting Welsh Minister, Julie James, making the decisions of whether to issue a general licence or whether to revoke it. We can see what's going to happen there. An ex-shooting Times writer has had his gun seized by police after posting a tweet about his improved mental health. Matt Cross, a freelance writer and author living in Scotland, wrote this tweet on his social media feed last week. The next day he received a phone call from the firearms and licensing officer from his local police. A day later, he was visited by two officers who took away his three legally held shotguns and two rifles, seen here in pictures that Matt took just before the seizure took place. Matt says Police Scotland has given him no explanation apart from saying that the tweet about his mental well-being caused concern. He will have to undergo a suitability review before getting his guns returned. Police Scotland has not commented. And it seems that the bar is so high, you can't even say, I felt quite sad for a while. Like, you can't say that. If you're a gamekeeper, you're a deer stalker, you're somebody like that, you can't say that because if you do, the police are going to come and take your guns. It's a dark day for rural livelihoods. That's the verdict of Scotland's landowners and countryside organisations, furious that the Scottish Government are to press ahead with a ban on using humane snares to trap predators. Ross Ewing from Scottish Land and Estates gave evidence to the Rural Affairs Committee about the proposed ban this week. Scotland's rural community has asked for humane cable restraints to be permitted to allow control of foxes and other pests from damaging wildlife and animal stocks. Britain's rural communities are stuck in a digital divide. A new study from mobile network Vodafone has revealed nearly half of Britain's rural areas lack high quality connectivity to the nationwide mobile network. It describes many countryside locations as 5G not spots. It will take another decade to expand coverage to 99% of the UK. Those living and working in the countryside and on the receiving end of this poor coverage are only too aware of the benefits that the fast rollout of a 5G network could bring to their community. And it is time they are connected. There's a new Secretary of State for the Environment after a government reshuffle this week. Stephen Barclay MP replaces Therese Coffey in the role. In July this year, we replaced Coffey with a cauliflower after she failed to turn up at the Game Fair Theatre to talk to Charlie. His voting record shows him generally in favour of the Badger Cole, and he consistently votes to sell off Forestry England. He also welcomes crackdowns on poaching. Politicians in Victoria are considering using game meat to feed the poor. Jeff Borman of the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party said the Australian hunters shot more than 120,000 deer in 2022, but many of the animals never made it into the food chain. His Hunters for the Hungry initiative proposes supplying free meat to the homeless. He says a similar initiative in New Zealand has contributed more than four tonnes of high quality game meat to food banks. In the UK, the Country Food Trust is a world leading charity supplying game and venison to food banks. Conservation industry lobbying has dashed hopes of closer trading ties between the EU and Africa. The EU's policies on wildlife are among reasons Namibia can't sign a pan-African treaty with Europe. The EU has been pushing for the treaty as a reaction to China's increasing ties with African countries. Among problems Namibia has with the treaty is a call for the destruction of ivory stockpiles as part of combating wildlife trafficking. The EU had a similar treaty with OACPS, the Organisation of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, which expired. It has now introduced anti-conservation measures in the new version. DEFRA has downgraded avian flu from high risk to medium in a review. The disease, which affects both wild birds and livestock, was considered a major risk to Britain's bird life. There's been just one case of the disease in the past month in England, and another one in Scotland since the start of October. DEFRA announces that those working with birds should remain vigilant and continue to take precautions. 
A new warning has gone out to drivers in Norway after a spike in deer collisions. On a single day last week, there were 19 reports of deer-related RTAs on Norway's rural road network. Winter months with poor visibility are the worst. Last year, nearly 16,000 deer and moose were recorded killed on Norway's roads. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. And finally, British Olympic shooter Abby Ling has launched a campaign to help fund her dream of shooting for her country. Abby from Somerset is a former British record holder in Olympic Trap and a former clay shooter of the year. She is fully self-funded and needs to raise enough money to help her get to Paris for next year's games. Her husband Ed, the former world and European junior champion, won bronze at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and is also likely to be going to Paris. Link below. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.